Welcome back to American Narratives. YouTube has become one of the most attractive, or some would say most addictive, media platforms on the internet. And up until this time, it has provided everything you could want, whether it's old gold music or James Bond films or summer dessert recipes or winter dessert recipes. However, there are changes in store. And to discuss them, I have author and commentator Sherry Williams on the line from Hollywood. Thanks for coming in today, Sherry. Oh, my pleasure, Al. Anytime. Why do you think many of us are spending more time watching YouTube and more people are hooked on it? Why do you think this is going on? Well, I know that the younger generation in particular is pulling away from commercial TV because it's just not entertaining. You know, they'd rather watch the favorite YouTuber do quick shows with raw material and talk about what interests them, like this 15-minute show the kids love called Brave Wilderness. Do you think that the rise of YouTube and its ability to attract these people is one more example of the declining power of the old-time Hollywood studios? Well, not necessarily, because people still want to see the blockbuster films like Wonder Woman, Alien Covenant on the big screen. But the younger generation wants quick entertainment, you know, from their favorite YouTubers that's posted every day. And we know that the YouTuber programs have been making serious money in return for hip language and videos shot on cell phones. Yeah, some of these overnight millionaires just show off their cars, their clothes, their expensive stuff, and kids just eat it up, you know? They just, millions of these kids just love to see the stuff. You know, all a YouTuber needs is a cell phone with a camera, and they make these raw videos that kids prefer over produced TV shows. So, but what is it about raw video that, how should I put this, is not necessarily very well shot over well, it's, pro professional films? Mm -hmm. What is it that... that well, because it's, it's spontaneous. It's spontaneous, but you, you do not know. There's no script. You know, you do not know what's going to come. Just like that brave wilderness where this guy puts bugs and all kinds of things on him and then screams and yells as, you know, he's being poisoned. And the kids just go crazy over the spontaneity of that. So is that what it is then, the spontaneity? Is that is that the code word? I here? think so. Well, you know oh. when you watch a TV show, it's pretty scripted. Well, yeah, I mean, most of of, our, of the sitcoms we watch, you know that the laugh track is going and you know that there are going to be a certain number of punchlines before the commercial. I know, and after a while we kind of already are programmed and it gets a little boring. Yeah. We know that the, the social media platforms are all working on sidetracking the objectionable content. Where does YouTube fit into this? How are they doing? Well, you know, AT&T and a growing number of companies are pulling their advertising from Google. And, of course, this is having a financial impact on the YouTubers because they rely on the advertisement. You know, they're finding their videos demonetized with no justification, no option to appeal. So YouTuber has a new rule right now that requires creators to reach at least a minimum of 10,000 viewers before they can even share in an ad. So YouTubers are fighting back by leaving YouTube. There are many other providers now who don't restrict their voice. So in order for a YouTuber with a cell phone and, and all that to start bringing in money, they have to have 10,000 viewers first. Yes, that's right. So what happens to the creator when a show gets kicked off of YouTube? Well, there's other platforms now to choose from, you know, and they allow the creator to continue having a voice. However, without the advertisers, some of them are asking their fans for a small fee. But just think, if they have five million fans giving a dollar, that's making a killing. How do they pay the money? They mail in checks or what do they do? You know, I'm not even, I, I'm 100% not sure, but I bet it's just something like PayPal or something, you know, where you just boom, hit it, and a dollar goes. Right. So, in effect, instead of changing channels when they don't like a program, YouTuber fans are changing platforms, in effect. Oh, I think so, because that's the fun of it. Basically, it's streaming your favorite outlet. There's a new platform called Bandit that is becoming so popular with unrestricted voices. 
I don't mean like, you know, terrorism or anything like that, but just more liberal entertainment, more than you would see on TV. Mm. We're starting to run out of time, but just before we leave, where does this leave YouTube and its fans for the future? Well, advertisers are trying to figure out how to cash in, but they seem to want to do it uh, by objecting content. So YouTube is becoming more like TV with sponsors who pay for programs they trust won't degrade them. You know, fans who follow their favorite YouTubers do so because they want opinions. This is going to destroy YouTube as we know it. It's all about advertisers wanting more revenue, fans wanting more original entertainment. That is the new Hollywood. Just quickly, if it destroys YouTube, where does that leave them? Well, like I said, they have all these other platforms that allow more of a liberal voice. You know, I mean, like the guy putting bugs on himself and screaming in pain. You won't okay. see that probably okay. on regular TV. We'll have to leave it there. I've been talking to Sherry Williams uh, about YouTube and where it's going and what's happening.